Good evening, church. How are you doing? Now my great tension is, what if it's not powerful? Jason, <laughs> Jungle said it was a powerful message. So, um, anyway, it's a great joy that we can come together and worship our living God. Um, are you all okay today? Are you tired? Yes. Awake? Yes. I'm tired. Just tell the truth. <laughs> but it's been it's midnight, right? Let's just just please say the facts. But it, it's it's great that as we have come together to hear um, um, the testimonies of God's goodness, and even through difficult times, God has sustained us and taken us through. So it's been a um, 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 great time to listen and to worship, also to hear testimonies and also to sing praises to God. Um, so today, the message I want to uh, share, the title is called The Road to Completion. And as the gentle mentioned for some of our coconut folks, it may be a repetition. And, um, and um, I think it's the will of God that you hear it again, okay? Uh, Philip mentioned that, uh, Philip came and mentioned that, um, you know, he stopped complaining uh, after hearing the message, but uh, maybe uh, there's another reminder that's needed. Um, but as we get into the message, my two children are here, my wife is here, I'm not going to share a story about my wife. Uh, but I'm going to share a story about my two children, and, and I apologize in advance. It's not very good stories, but uh, so, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, it will be good. So, as we as we come to a close of a year, um, I have been going through a lot of reflection uh, about uh, what what has happened in my life over the year. And um, I don't know, um, you know, many of us had great testimonies. Um, I think this message is not for Anil Kumar. I mean, uh, he had an amazing uh, uh, year. Uh, but it's for a lot of other people who go through discouragements in our lives. And uh, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs, uh, especially this year. Uh, as Vijayendu mentioned about my dad's health. Um, a lot of attention going there, just uh, ups and downs of emotions, a lot of faith, not seeing results, and um, um, it's been a lot of like a roller coaster. Um, but then in the midst of all, all um, at times um, there is not much of an excitement as you come to the end of the year. It, it, I have to like really think hard. Like, what are some of the good things that has happened in my life? Uh, because at times reflection takes some time. Normally as human beings, we are wired to kind of have our discouragements in our forefront. I don't know if you've gone to any meetings with uh, individuals, if you're managing individuals, and um, you have to like, um, you know, give some correction. You know, I've been taught this sandwich principle where you give a positive and then you give your negative and then you give a positive, right? Have you heard of the sandwich principle? All right. So I have the middle right at the end of my tongue, right? When I have that meaning. But before that, it takes me a long time to find the bread. How do I cover this thing up? Right? How do I put it in a capsule? So I may think for half an hour, okay? And then I go on. So what I'm saying is it takes a long time at times to, to look into our lives and um, find the, uh, uh, the good parts. And so uh, the two stories, as I, as I share these two stories, many of us may be in these categories. Uh, uh, and you may find yourself in this story. So the first story is that um, while Allison uh, went to US to be with her dad and family, um, um, two weeks I was alone with 
uh, my kids. And actually, it was a very pleasant and good time. I really enjoyed it because um, this is something I uh, lose at times just being in busy. Uh, so this forced me to uh, cut everything else down and just do the bare minimum uh, that I need to do and come home in time to receive the kids and take care, feed them and all of that. But one of our trips, we went to see my grandfather, who is 99. It's his birthday today, and he's going to be 100, OK? <laughs> Actually, every watch night service, he would give this uh, his birthday speech. Uh, but he's on bed now uh, in Corte. So anyway, uh, when Allison was away, I went to see him. And, and on the way back, I pre-planned this time that I would have with the kids. I would take them to, to stay at a hotel. Um, I had some hotel points that I could use and so that the kids could um, use the pool and enjoy and have some a surprise time. So I did not tell them. I packed all the stuff uh, way in advance, kept it in the trunk. And then we were maybe 9 o'clock, 10 p.m. We were driving by and they saw this hotel and they wanted to stay there. And I said, maybe not this time, let's just wave at it and say hi. And then I just tricked them by going around the roundabout, uh, and they were just so distressed. And then I would say, in case you didn't say by, hi last time, let's go around again. And, and then finally we got into the hotel, and they were so, I mean, Karis is so excited even now. She, she was so excited and, and enthusiastic and kissing all over my hands. and. And so grateful, Baba, thank you so much. Thank you for taking us here. Nico as well, he was very excited. And um, this great joy was there. And, and, and I was letting them know this is a gift. We could just spend time. And uh, so once we were having dinner, uh, the first question came, Papa, uh, there is this uh, clubhouse in, in this hotel. Are we able to? go there for breakfast. I said, no, those are for paid customers. You pay extra to go there. You cannot just uh, go there if you use points because you're literally staying there for free. And so um, I mentioned, I was trying to bring them back to the gratefulness because I, I felt like suddenly it was taking a turn. It was, it was going towards this, this something, this uh, place we could not go. But as we were having uh, uh, dinner, one of this waiter uh, who recognized my kids, they're usually recognizable at the places. Uh, we just sit, sit there uh, and, and they have the conversation with the people. And, and they recognize Karis and say, hey, welcome, good to see you. And, uh, and she said, why don't you come to the club in the morning? She, he offered that to her. And uh, so I decided, okay, I will tag along with that, you know. And um, again, I'm reminding them, this is a great gift. I mean, you should have to pay a lot. First of all, we're staying here on points, and, and, and now uh, somebody just offered to go and have breakfast there, and I was like, yay, we don't have, we don't have to pay for uh, breakfast, you know, because usually you will have to pay for breakfast uh, when you stay with points. Anyway, um, I was excited that I was, you know, I didn't have to pay for breakfast, but they were excited they get to go to the club. And anyway, once we got there, um, they were so happy, and Karis ordered her best favorite uh, breakfast, which is two one boiled eggs. One <laughs> one yes, yes, one hot chocolate, and uh, she was so happy sitting, lined up the fork and everything and opened the uh, eggs and cracked it open and, and lo and behold, the yolk was a bit runny. It was not as hard as what she liked and suddenly all that excitement wore off. It was a downward spiral from there. Usually she can finish a, a, a boiled egg in like one or you know, two, three minutes, but this was a half an hour of whining. This yolk is not perfect, it's not good. And I was trying to remind her, remember this is a gift, you did not expect to come to the hotel, and you got to come to the hotel, and, 
and, and, and, and you did not, we don't deserve to be here in this, this club space and, and you got to, you didn't pay for it and, and you got to order your eggs and hot chocolate and finally you got this yolk that you, you're not too excited about, right? And sometimes life is like that, it serves you what? Runny yolks, right? And, and, and so many of us may able to uh, uh, kind of, it's 12 o'clock, my words are being, you know, just jumbled, but uh, you, 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 you feel like many of us, we, we are so blessed, but at times we are served this runny yolk, and then we just kind of get grumpy, and, 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 it's, and it's hard. And so for us, some of us this year, it's been like that, right? A lot of blessings, but you have, you've had some runny yolks, and, and that has ruined some of our year, great disappointments, right? And for some of us, uh, this is a story about Nico. He's an artist, he loves drawing, and he was, uh, he was doing something while I was making a phone call, and usually when he draws and plays, there's a lot of sound around. It's like a special effects. He would be driving the car, the so many sound effects, and and usually I love to say, Nico, just just keep it quiet, just just calm it down. And and this time there was a lot of special effects, and I was on a phone call, and I just shushed him, like Nico, please be quiet. And he just storms off, right, and uh, just goes into the room. And uh, two three minutes later, Allison brings me a bunch of papers. Uh, that said, um, I'm useless, or I'm an idiot, and I'm uh, I'm stupid, and um, and and out of his uh, pain, he wrote these things, and and I called him, and we had some chat for some time, and then I asked Nico, what do you think God thinks about you? And then I asked, why don't you go f uh, think for five minutes and write it down, and then. He went and wrote down several sentences. I'm useful. I'm a nice kid. God loves me. I'm a good creation. And I just said, why don't you write this 20, 30 times and show it to me so that it just sticks in your heart. And some of us, as we reflect this year, we may be in that category where you just, you were, you had this amazing plan and suddenly it was shushed or it was, it was out of your control. It was, it was taken away from you, and that challenged your identity. You questioned yourself, who am I? Am I, is there value in my life? Uh, am I good enough? Did God created me for anything purposeful? And we, and we question, right? So um, if you think for this five seconds, you know, I think many of us can find ourselves in either of this category. I find myself in both of this category in different situations, right? At times I'm, I'm blessed and, and I, I get this runny yolk that I was not expecting and I whine about it and complain and, 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 and it ruins my moment. And at times I was expecting and, 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 and excited and, and, and have a lot of special effects in my plan. Like once I was you know, so excited to go to a fasting prayer uh, in Coconut, waited for five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, one hour, two hours, nobody was there. It's like, God, am I called to do these things? I mean, these questions just come into your mind, right? You suddenly challenge and questions your identity. So, um, um, so, especially as we come to this end of the year, we're just 20 minutes away from uh, this new year. Uh, yes, we had good testimonies, but in the depths of our hearts, if you really look into it, there are challenges, there are discouragements, there are uh, uh, expectations that you had did not match, and then you're, you're, you're questioning your identity, you're questioning your value in this earth. And um, when we look today into the book of Zechariah, which is uh, where I want to uh, 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 look for today's word, uh, we see a group of people in great discouragement. 
And Zacharias is uh, one of the minor prophets, and this is happening during the exile time. And uh, just uh, a, a brief background so that we would understand uh, how they got into the exile time. So we're going to do a quick overview of the Old Testament, okay? So we know God, a loving God, a relational God, created human beings. Male and female, God entrusted everything, all the gifts that He has made to them, right? Yes or no? Yes. Right? But then the people chose, okay, we, won't, we don't want to trust that God, we want to trust in ourselves, we want to just kind of make our own path and destiny, and that led to disobedience, and so they chose their own path, right? Rather than trusting in God, valuing this relationship with God, wanting to know the morality, the right or wrong from God, they chose to, to look to themselves and find their own way. That led to this big separation between God and man. Right? And then we see this loving God who pursues these people and then fast forwarding to, to redeem these people because this God is a just God, a holy God. He cannot just wipe it off. He makes a covenant with a man, Abraham. He just reaches out to them and he listens and he obeys and he makes a covenant and says, through your family, I'm going to fix this world. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unravel my plan for this world through your descendants. And your descendants will be like the, the stars in the sky, like the sand in the, uh, the beach. It will be numerous. But... They did not have any children. So they had to put their faith in God. And, and God answered, uh, or God not answered their prayer. He was faithful to their uh, his, his promises. And we see this, this, this family, uh, an, an unlikely family, an old, old couple who could not have children. They became a large number of people. They found favor under a guy named Pharaoh. But then when they grew so powerful, uh, the next pharaoh thought, okay, it's probably best to just keep them under check and put them as slaves. And then God rescued them out of there and said, I'll take you to a promised land. And then he gave, he took them in a mighty way into this, uh, away from Egyptians. And then God gave these laws and statutes so that they would understand him, so they could follow him, they could relate with him. And then move, moving forward, and then this people became a nation. They had kings and rulers, and they became like other nations. But suddenly, as, as time went on, people start to forget the ways of God. And, and God wanted to, to guide them and get their attention and correct them. So there was a guy named Nebuchadnezzar in, uh, in five, uh, 586... Um, I believe, uh, yes, 586 BC came and took over Jerusalem. Okay, sorry, it's a history lesson. Is it boring? No. No? Oh, good. So, uh, 586, Nebuchadnezzar come and takes on this people and bring them to Babylon and, and destroys their land and crushes their land. And now these people are in exile short brief history of Old Testament, right? So now these people are just out of their place, out of their homes. Their temple is destroyed. They cannot relate to God. The presence of God, they cannot see anymore. So they rely on the prophets to hear from God, to understand Him. And, and, and many of them have lost everything. Can you imagine losing your household, losing your family identity, language identity, new names given to you? What a discouragement. Right? Things that you hoped and planned for just ripped away from you and they're brought into this new land and they're living under a king named Nebuchadnezzar. And then in 539, a man named Cyrus comes under Persian rule and then he, he, he takes over from Babylon and he lets and shows favor to the people of Israel and sends them and say, you can go rebuild your land. 
right? And we know Nehemiah's story. It's an amazing story where he goes and builds the wall. And along this time, there was two people. One was the governor who was Zerubbabel, and then one was the high priest who was Joshua. They were also sent off so that they can rebuild the temple. They were given the task. They go with so much excitement, but then once they have left, the, put the foundational stone, there is so much of chaos. The rulers have changed. The taxes have gone up. The there are political strife. They're not seeing the prophecy take place. The city is partially built and discouragement builds on. They begin to question their value, question their identity. Where is God? Is God there in the midst of all of these situations? We generally mentioned about how uh, you know, we, we started out with this great focus on prayer. And, and I was so excited. I was like, I mean, we're going to grow as a church. And in my mind, I was thinking of you know, strategies of life groups and multiplying discipleship, numbers growing, multiple services. I mean, you know, just... just you know, there's no point in, you know, it's free to dream, right? So I had all of these thoughts in my mind. Yes, while God gives us a vision, because God was putting in our hearts a call to pray, prayer and a call to build, right? But sometimes our interpretation of building looks like how we want to interpret it, right? Sometimes when God says something, it's good to just ask for the interpretation too. What does this mean really, God? But I had a bunch of interpretation in my mind. But then as months and days went on, this building that I assumed was not the building that was happening. Right? It didn't look like building at all. It looked like just, just pain and, and question and, and asking where is God and, and trying to look to Him. And But during these times, I, especially uh, coming to June and right around the passing of my dad, I really start to see that God was beginning to build something. Right? God was strengthening our faith, not in the things that I was hoping to see, but strengthening my faith in who He is because I was just looking to Him and relating to Him, not to get things fixed up down here. So this type of discouragement that, that, that Zechariah uh, is seeing and Zerubbabel and, and, and um, Joshua is seeing, many of us can relate to in our day-to-day -day lives, right? Maybe God has spoken, I mean, Jekyll and I just mentioned about things God has spoken to the church, but many of us can relate to things that God has spoken to us individually, right? I'm sure there are moments you can remember God has shown you things, spoken to you things, and given you direction. But then, as you kept going, it doesn't look like what you expected. Right? So when, when uh, uh, Cyrus releases the people of Israel, imagine the great celebration. Right? When you are sent from exile back to your home country, there would be jubilant and praise. Yes or no? Yes. Right? We have not experienced that. Right? When I know we have somebody uh, in Kakana, his name is Richie. And he's from Kuwait. He grew up in Kuwait and, and he's studying here. And every time he gets to go to Kuwait, he's so excited because he's going back to the land of shawarma. Right? <laughs> Arabian food. He, he, he loves this Arabic food, right? You cannot compare that to exile. He's just so concerned about going from, you know, Kochi to Kuwait where he grew up because he loves the food. Imagine you are taken away for years from your land. Take everything ruined and destroyed and the faith that you have, the temple that you look to, to, to see the presence of God, everything is wiped away. And now suddenly you get to go back. You are given the permission to go back by Cyrus and then later Darius. Right? But then, once you put the foundation, things are running slowly. So let's look to chapter 4 quickly. And uh, 
So we, we see here, um, <clears throat> Zachariah has given this, this, this uh, image. It says um, from verse 2 on, And he said to me, What do you see? I see, I said, I see, behold, a lampstand of gold with a bowl on top of it and seven lamps on it with seven lips on each lamp that are on top of it. And there were two olive trees, one on the right of, right of the bowl and another on the left. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me and answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, Lord. Then he said to me, Now listen, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. So Zachariah, the prophet of God, is receiving a word from God to Zerubbabel, who is the governor. And listen to what he is saying. Do you not know... No, no, I'm sorry. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. First, not by might, nor by power, but my spirit says the Lord. What does it say? Not by might, nor by power, but my might, spirit says the Lord. Are you excited? Yes. Right. We say we are excited, but when we get to do these things, we are not usually excited. Okay? Because when, when, you, when you get a vision from God and it is exciting, you get to go back to Israel. But then, but then when you get to build things and then the circumstance is not right and, and, and you begin to work, the tendency and the temptation is always to use our power and might. To strategize, to plan, to, to get, get a whole rally people around, to find a coalition team. You get all the leadership principles in your mind and you are so excited to build something. right? And when we had the camp theme, I was excited to build something. right? Our camp theme was, let's build together. right? And when God speaks something to us, we are so excited to build because we translate it as God is going to use me so that I can build something. Right? And then 10% of that I'll give it to God. Just kidding. But, so, we tend to focus on, but, 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 but even for a building construction right here, because Zerubbabel is asked to build, it's not some spiritual building they're building. They're building what? A real temple built of rocks and solid things. Right? But even for that, if God has given you a word and God has given us a church as a word, here God is reminding Zechariah to tell Zerubbabel, it is not by might, it is nor by power, it is by the Spirit of God, it is by the Spirit you will be able to build this. Verse 7, it says, Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. See, here, there is, a, because of great problems here, I said people are discouraged, taxes are high, political strife, not seeing the fulfillment of prophecy, city is partially built, things that you're expected to go your way, it is not going your way. Papa told you, shoo. Right? It's not going your way. But at that time, as the mountains are piled up, as the mountains of discouragement is, is, is sky high, the question is asked, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, it shall be plain. It shall become plain. My friends, I want to remind us as we come, as we reflect through this year and as we, as we look forward to this new year, there are discouragements in our life. There is no reset button. Somehow we kind of assume in our life as we come to the end of this year, there is a reset button. We can just start our new life January 1st. Everything is erased. Now you can go on you know, with your life. No, it is, doesn't work that way. 
After we share the testimonies and the excitement, we go home and sleep. Tomorrow morning, same bed, same ceiling. You're going to wake up still, you know, at times miserable with the knots on your bed and stuff. And, and still the mountain may be there. But God is saying, if I have spoken to you, and it is not by the power or might that, that you will follow, but if, when you follow my spirit, you ask to the mountain, where are you, O oh great mountain? Because it will be plain. It will become plain. And then it goes on to say, And he shall bring forward the top stone and with shouts of, gra shouts of grace, grace to it. So remember, everything is ruined. The foundation was built. But nothing is done after that. Mountain of discouragements. But God is telling Zechariah to let Zerubbabel know that Zerubbabel will put the top stone. So in the ancient architecture, there will be arches and there's no cement and stuff. You put blocks of, 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 of stone. And, and God is saying that the capstone that which holds all these things together and the dome together, the capstone that holds, you will place it with shouts of grace. Why would you shout grace as you caps, put the capstone? Usually as, once you finish, you do the final work of it. Usually, I, I'm an armored, amateur engineer, designer and architect. And usually I just look at it and, good job Emmanuel. Right? You pat on your back because you have put your power, you put your might. But here, it is not a self pat on the back, but there is a shout of grace. It says grace, grace to it as you put the capstone on the head. Why would we say grace? <clears throat> My friends, it's reminded here that the grace, the song of grace is sung because it is by the Spirit this work is done. It is not by might, it's not by power, but God, when He speaks something into our lives, even in the point of disappointments, even in the mountain that you see, when you move according to the power of the Spirit, when we move according to the direction of the Spirit, God will continue His work. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know the Lord of hosts has sent me. For whoever has despised the days of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the, in the hands of Zerubbabel. My friends, as we come to this new year, just minutes away, I want to just encourage us as the worship team comes forward. I want to encourage us, the God who has spoken to us, the God who has called you to put the foundation stone, that same God, even if it takes 20 years, even if there is a mountain in front of you, the Spirit of God, by His power, will move it. And then you put the capstone. The words from our mouth, the songs from our mouth will be grace, grace, grace. My friends, as we stand up right now, I just want to just, just be thinking, yes, there are mountains of discouragement. Yes, there are mountains in front of us. But God is reminding us. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord, the God who used you for completion, for, for foundation, He will bring us into completion. As we await this new year, let's just go in faith, looking to the Spirit of God, because He is the one who is the Lord of this church, and He will take us forward.